Okay, let's talk about service accounts. Now, just like any other user or any other process, a service needs a login account in order to interact with the operating system. So if I go to Tools and Services, there it is, you'll see all of my services, and I'm going to open up the Bit Service, Background Intelligent Transfer, because that's not going to break anything if I screw it up. And here, if I go to Login, you'll see that it's set to login using the local system account. Now, this is a generic account. And depending on my service, I may not want a generic account. I might, and this is a local system account, right? So I might need something, need an account that's going to have different uh, options on the network that my local system account would have, or the local system account might give me more rights than I want this particular uh, service to be able to have. So whatever it is, I don't always want to use a local system account. And as we look through, all of our services are going to have that type of account. In fact, here, let me scroll over and you'll see log on as. You'll see almost all of my accounts use local system. Here's a couple of them that use a local service account. So there's a network service account as well. So if we want to use a specific account, either for permissions or for security or for additional options, if we want to use a specific account rather than the generic local service, local system, network service account, then we need to create our own. Now there's two different ways we can do this. We can open up Active Directory and create any user account there. Now the drawback to doing that is that that account then falls under the regular permissions as a regular user account. So when I assign that to be used by a service, we grant that user account log on as a service rights. Now my problem here is that uh, sooner or later, my password is going to expire. Now, obviously, I can override that and say, you know, password never expires. But then I have this user account there with a password that never expires. So that's not ideal either. So if I don't do that, then sooner or later, my password is going to expire and I'm going to have to update it. And then I'm going to have to update all of my services to use a new password. That becomes a major problem. So what we do is we use something called a managed service account. And the managed service account is managed by the operating system. And it automatically updates the password in, according with, in accordance with password policies. And it's much more secure. But I can create that using either Active Directory users and computers or the administrative center. I need to create that in PowerShell. So I'm going to right click and go to PowerShell as admin. Okay, first thing I need to do, if I haven't done this before, and I've already done this on this one, but it would be add KDS, KDS root key. And this command is going to create a root key that we'll be able to use. So if I do this, I'm going to have to wait 10 hours for that to propagate through my Active Directory uh, infrastructure to make sure that all servers have the information that I need. So if I hit this, then I wait 10 hours and then I can create managed service accounts. Now in a test environment, there actually is a bypass and that's to set the effective date to today's date, add hours minus 10. And so what this does is this backdates this command 10 hours. And so it makes it think that it's already propagated. And I can kind of get away with that because I got a single server in a test environment. But if you don't have it, I mean, if you're just testing this, then this will work. But if you're doing this on a actual network, then do the add KDS root key and wait your 10 hours. All right. So once the 10 hours are up, now I can create a new AD service account. And here's my command. It's new AD, sir, see if I can spell service. There we go. Account. I'm going to set the name and I'm just going to do my name is test because I'm being really lazy. And then I need to set my DNS host name. And this is going to be the... Uh, place where you want this account created. So this is going to be one of your DCs. And in this case, I'm just going to do it to my dollar sign env colon computer name, which is going to be my local machine. And so that creates my account. And I can verify it by using the get ad service account test. And that shows me my ad service account. And it is enabled. It's 
name is test. All right, all the information. Now that creates a service account. Now the next thing I have to do is I have to associate that with a computer. So I'm going to do this. It's going to be add ad computer service account. And then I want to set the identity. And that's going to be the identity. That's going to be the computer that I want this to be used on. So this would be a member server. In this case, I'm going to, again, use my env colon computer name, and I'm going to install it locally. And then I'm going to set the service account to, and this could be the name of my service account. So what this does is this associates this service account now with this particular computer. So this computer can now manage that account. And then last thing we're going to do is we're going to install it. So this, these two things I've done in my domain controller, this last one, the install uh, AD service account, this I want to do on the computer that's going to be using it. And it just so happens that I want this to be used on this domain controller. So that makes my life easy. But if it wasn't, I would go to that server, RDP to it or PowerShell remote to it or something like that. And I'm going to issue the command install dash AD service account and then identity and the name of the service account that I want to use there. Now, here I have an issue because I'm trying to do it on this particular device. So that's creating my issue at the moment. Um, so don't worry about that because that should be done on that remote computer that's actually going to use it. Okay, now that you've got that installed, we're going to come back to services. There we go. And I'm going to find my bits service. There we go. And I'm going to change its logon and I am going to browse and I want to find the service account test. Found it. And there we go. That is now. Oh, sorry. Hmm, delete the password because we don't need it. And the account test has been granted logon as a service, right? And we are now using that service account. All right, that gives us more security than using the local accounts, gives us more customizability and more control over the accounts that our services are using.